Right, so now we're going to do an introduction on rational functions. All right, so our note would be a rational function is a function of the form f of x equals p of x divided by q of x. And this p of x and q of x are just polynomials. And obviously the denominator q of x there can't be equal to zero. So uh, a rational function is just a polynomial divided by another polynomial. That's it. Okay. All right, so let's look at the most basic of rational functions, and it's called the reciprocal function. Remember the six basic functions video that we had, um, where we um, had the squaring function, the cube root function, and all those? We're going to add this one to our list, the reciprocal function. So let's graph this. All right, so if you do a little t-chart, all right, so here's x and here's y, and it's called the reciprocal function for a reason. It takes every real number and pairs it up with its reciprocal. Right? Everybody agree here we can't use 0 for x, because you'd have 1 over 0, and that's undefined. So let's just start with 1. So if x is 1, y is 1. If x is 2, y is a half. If x is 3, y is a third. And as x gets bigger, your y values get smaller and smaller, closer and closer to 0. Right? You know, if x is negative 1, then y is negative 1. If x is negative 2, then y is negative a half, and so forth. Okay? So plotting those points, we would have... Here's one one, and we would have two and a half, three and a third, and as we go out here, they just get closer and closer to the x-axis. It's never going to be equal to zero, but it's going to get close, closer and closer to the x-axis, right? And when x is negative one, you're down here, negative one, y is negative one, and when x is negative two, you're at negative a half negative 3, and again, as x goes out towards negative infinity, your y values just keep getting closer and closer and closer to 0 um, on the x-axis. Right, so now what happens when x is, say, a half? So you have 1 divided by a half. Well, that goes to 2. And when x is a third, that goes to 3. All right, so that would be inside here. We'd look like that. And then when it's a third, we're getting like that. And when x is negative a half, then we're down here at negative two. And negative three, we're down, negative one third, we're down here at negative three. Where you see that? Okay. And so in the end, your graph, when you connect the dots, looks sort of like the following. Okay, let me see that. So that's the graph of the reciprocal function. Okay, so now let's let's talk about it. Okay, so what's the domain? Domain would be all x's such that x is not equal to zero. Everybody see that? Every x value is being used to the right and to the left except for the numbers, except for when x is 0, the y-axis, because the graph doesn't hit the y-axis. Alright, what about the range? The range. Alright, all y values are being used, except for, in this case, 0. We never hit the x-axis, but every single y value above the x-axis and every single y value below the x-axis is being used, and so the range would be all real numbers, except for when y is 0. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you, what happens, what happens as x, and this is new notation, goes to infinity? As x gets really large, that's what this notation right here means, as x goes off to infinity. So as x goes off to infinity here, okay, what are all your y values doing? Right, where they're getting smaller and smaller. They're getting closer and closer to zero. And so we would say f of x gets closer to zero. Everybody see that? Same idea if x if x goes out to negative infinity, then f of x would get closer to zero. Because you're going out to negative infinity, your y values keep getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Okay? So now what happens is x 
comes into comes into zero here from the right hand side. So, you know, one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, so forth and so on. As your x gets closer and closer to zero, coming at it here from the right hand side, what are your y values doing? Well, they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, when x is one one thousandth, then your y value would be a thousand, It'd be way up here somewhere. Right? And when x is um, say coming at zero from the left hand side here, say like x is negative a half, negative a third, negative a fourth, negative one one hundredths, um, then what are your y values doing? Well they keep getting larger and larger just down here in the negative direction. Okay? When x is negative one one hundredth, then your y value is negative a hundred. Alright, everybody see that? If you go into calculus, you'll discuss this in, in, in much, much greater detail. Well these ideas here um, lead us into uh, the concept of what are called vertical and horizontal asymptotes. In this case, the line x equals zero is what's called a vertical asymptote. And what that means is that for a rational function here, when you have a vertical asymptote, that means that x value is never being used. Right? See, so we get really, really close to x equals zero, both from the right and from the left, but we never, we never are allowed to let x be zero. And that's because we would be undefined, right? And so, therefore, we get, for, for a rational function, that's why we get a vertical asymptote. Right. Now, as x gets really, really large, going off into the uh, positive infinity or going off towards negative infinity, if your y values get closer and closer and closer to a certain number, then we call that number a horizontal asymptote. So in this case, what number do the y values keep getting closer and closer to as x gets really large? Well, the y values keep getting closer and closer to zero. So the line y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote. So f for rational functions, the, the vertical asymptotes are going to come from, well, what makes your denominator zero? Okay, and we'll talk more about that in the, in the next video. Okay, but just generally speaking, um, vertical asymptotes for rational functions are going to come from what makes your denominator zero because we can't use them. Right? So therefore we're going to have this little asymptote idea. Horizontal asymptotes are a little trickier to understand. They are what your function values are approaching as x values get really, really large. And I'm talking we're talking really, really large numbers here. You know, a thousand isn't large enough. A, a gazillion isn't large enough. I mean, we're talking as x goes out towards negative infinity, do your y values keep getting closer and closer and closer to a certain number, or do they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Right? Well, if they keep getting closer and closer to a certain number, like we've got here, you know, they keep getting smaller and smaller and get closer and closer to zero, then the line y equals zero, or y equals that number, whatever, whatever number that they are approaching, we call that a horizontal asymptote. Now these are really kind of calculus concepts we're talking about here um, on, a, on an algebraic level. And if you go on to calculus, um, you'll learn new notation to write all this and, and new words actually to express um, uh, th these concepts that we're talking about. All right, so that's the introduction of rational functions. Rational functions can have vertical asymptotes. They can have horizontal asymptotes. Uh, they may not have any one of those, but they, they can have these asymptote ideas. And they're just a polynomial divided by another polynomial. Uh, make sure you see the next video, which is going to go into uh, greater detail about um, the asymptotes. All right? All right, study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.